Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the Colorado Plateau. This is a huge area in the southwestern U.S. that is home to some of the most beautiful scenery on Earth, including some of the most well-known natural landmarks in the country. And not many folks live in this part of the U.S. There are several national parks, a bunch of national monuments, and much of the land is protected in one way or the other. And this area is completely desert. It's all dry, very little precipitation, which has led to many of the formations being what they are. And because you have so much exposed geology, because you don't have those pesky trees covering up everything, you can just see some of the beautiful earth underneath. And Many places in the world call themselves the greatest show on Earth, but because of all the exposed geology, I would call the Colorado Plateau the greatest show of Earth. So what is a plateau in general? It's a large area of reasonably similar elevation, so it's kind of flat, but this whole plateau is almost like a table sitting above a surrounding area of lower elevation. A mesa, which is Spanish for table, is very similar to a plateau, it's just much smaller. So the geology of the two is kind of the same, but the plateau is just the much larger one. The Colorado Plateau straddles the Four Corners states, and the Four Corners Point is on the plateau. It's approximately 130,000 square miles, which makes it about the size of Germany or Vietnam. And despite the name, Colorado is the state that has the smallest portion of the Colorado Plateau. The term Colorado is in reference more to the Spanish word Colorado for colored red or for the Colorado River itself, not for the state. The population on the plateau is about 750,000 people, with most of that being in the fringes of the plateau. But there are only about 250,000 people in the heart of the plateau. Most of the beautiful rocks and canyons and formations you're going to see are made up of sedimentary rocks, primarily limestone, sandstone, and shale. And as the name implies, a sedimentary rock is a type of rock where sediment is deposited in layers through time. And when the rock gets eroded, usually by water, you can see millions and millions of years of layering in the sedimentary rocks. There are a large number of volcanic and igneous formations found primarily around the actual Four Corners spot where the four states come together. I'm going to go over some of the individual spots within the Colorado Plateau, starting with the most famous one, the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon is about 277 miles long and at its widest point is 18 miles and the deepest point is over 6,000 feet. The two main sides of the canyon are known as the North Rim and the South Rim, and the North Rim is over 1,000 feet higher in elevation than the South Rim. And when you look down the walls of the Grand Canyon, what you're seeing are about 2 billion years of sedimentary layering. There are three major rock types that make up the Grand Canyon at the bottom, or the basement, is the Vishnu Schist. Schist is a metamorphic rock that is created when sedimentary rocks are placed under heavy pressure. Going up the canyon where you see some of the white cliffs, that's Coconino Sandstone. And you get up to the rim of the Grand Canyon, it's Kaibab Limestone. And then you've got the Colorado River flowing through here for millions of years, breaking this rock off, flowing in this direction, weathering away this side. You fast forward to today, you've got the Grand Canyon. So I'm going to run down the list of the other national parks and many of the national monuments to give you an idea of some of the beautiful things being protected on the Colorado Plateau. One is Zion National Park in southwestern Utah. This national park protects both Zion Canyon and Kalob Canyon to the north end of the park. The main sites and the main road through the park are usually going to be quite busy throughout the entire year, but like most other national parks, once you get away from all that back into the wilderness, you have it basically to yourself. If you were to be doing the Grand Circle tour of the national parks in this region going in a clockwise direction after Zion, the next one you would get to is Bryce Canyon. And despite the name Bryce isn't actually a canyon, it was formed more by frost wedging when water would get pooled up and it would freeze and expand and cause cracking like that. So it isn't a true canyon, even though it has the name Bryce Canyon. And the most striking formations of Bryce are hoodoos. And what happens here is basically the same everywhere on Earth. So when you see a strange looking formation like that, that's usually going to be stronger rock that is tougher to weather or erode. And it was at one time surrounded by much weaker rock that was easily eroded. An analogy might be one of those old Tootsie Roll pops where the outer layer is much more easily eroded, but when you get to the middle, it's much tougher. Or imagine using a power washer on a peach. You'll spray away all the flesh, but be left behind with the pit. Continuing on the National Park Circuit, the next one you'll get to is Capitol Reef. And this protects largely water pocket fold, and this is a monocline fold. And a fold is like a curve in the formation to where you have a kind of a flatter plateau and it, almost like a geologic slide down to a lower level where it plateaus off again. You'll see beautifully colored formations all throughout this region, but Capitol Reef is where you have the most beautifully colored ones in my opinion. 
Another national park in this region is Canyonlands. This has very similar geology and scenery to the Grand Canyon, but is much less visited. The Grand Viewpoint at the Willow Flat Campground I think is one of the most beautiful viewpoints in the entire country. But that's just one part of this park. Another part is called the Needles, and these are big individual rock columns. Another part of Canyonlands is called the Maze. This is one of the most inaccessible areas in the contiguous U.S., and as the name implies, it's a big maze of smaller canyons. And Canyonlands is where the Colorado River and the Green River come together. These are two of the most important rivers in the region for carving out some of the biggest canyons, and Canyonlands is where you find the confluence. Not too far from Canyonlands is Arches National Park. This is where you have the largest cluster of natural arches in the world. There are over 2,000. All of them are sandstone. You have smaller canyons in here. The Colorado River flows through the park. And these arches sit atop salt beds and you get the shape of the arch through wind erosion. So you can think of these things being pelted with wind-driven sand for millions of years. But regardless of what you see today, all arches will eventually fall. Another national park in the region is Mesa Verde in southwestern Colorado. This is the largest protected archaeological site in the U.S. There are over 600 dwellings at this national park. This park is most well known for having the many cliff dwellings. These were largely built in the 1200s by the indigenous Puebloans, which is the name the Spanish gave to the people living there. But the people didn't live in these cliff dwellings for too long, and many migrated south into what is now New Mexico and Arizona. And to this day, many descendants of these people live in these pueblos in northwestern New Mexico and northeastern Arizona. And this is a very popular place, which is why it became a national park in 1906. There was much vandalism and looting at the archaeological sites prior to national park status. And more people visit this park each year than ever lived there. And the last national park on the plateau is Petrified Forest in Arizona. There are a couple of different parts of the park. The most well-known one is the Petrified Forest itself. The petrified wood is about 200 million years old. These are trees that were buried under ash and then crystallized. So these are dinosaur age trees and unfortunately there's much looting going on to this day. So I would say please don't buy any of the petrified wood in some of those souvenir shops in the region. The other main part of this park is the painted desert. And you get this beautiful coloring through layers of shale, siltstone, and bentonite clay under a strong layer of limestone. But like I had mentioned before, they're not just national parks. There are a bunch of national monuments and other protected areas. And I'm going to go over a few of them right now. The largest one is the Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument. This was the last officially mapped area in the contiguous U.S. It's very remote. And it's called the Grand Staircase because you have sedimentary rock layers that have increasing height, like a staircase. Also in this area, you have Bears Ears, Valley of the Gods, and Monument Valley. And you've probably seen photographs of these areas a bunch of times. It's really accessible to get to these spots. Another major area in the Colorado Plateau is the Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. And what this is, is a dammed up portion of the Colorado River that creates the huge Lake Powell. And this is the primary reservoir for the southwestern U.S. It's seen some pretty dire lake levels recently. And with hardly any water in this region, this reservoir is incredibly important. In northern Arizona, not too far from the Grand Canyon, is Sunset Crater National Monument. This is a cinder cone volcano that last erupted in the 11th century. It's dormant and could erupt again, although there hasn't been really any activity there in a while. And this became protected in 1930 after a Hollywood studio wanted to blow the mountain up to create an avalanche for a movie. And after the plan of the movie studio became known, President Hoover protected it as a national monument in 1930. Another interesting area on the plateau is Coral Pink Sand Dune State Park in Utah. And the pink sand dunes are eroded remnants of pink sandstone. Another Utah State Park on the plateau is Kodachrome Basin. These look kind of like the hoodoos of Bryce Canyon, but what these are are actually old geyser holes. Sediment would gather in the geyser and then solidify. And through the years, the rock surrounding this solidified geyser was weaker, so that was eroded, and what was left behind was the solidified geyser hole. These are called sand pipes, and it's believed that this is the only place in the world where these exist. Another interesting state park in Utah is Goblin Valley. The formations here are hoodoos, just like the ones in Bryce Canyon, but they've been referred to historically as goblins. And the last protected area I'm going to mention is Vermilion Cliffs National Monument. This is in far northern Arizona, close to the Utah border. The most well-known feature of this park is something called the Wave. And you've probably seen photos of this, but you'll probably never go to it. 
This is known as a very difficult hike with very little shade and is a very dangerous hike in the summer. You need a permit to hike on it and there aren't that many permits given per day. You get these curves as the prevailing wind carried sand and other particles through this area and it kind of hit up against the sides and eroded more and more through millions of years and it's not going to follow a straight line as it's following the prevailing wind so you end up all these years later with the wave. So those are some of the major protected areas on the plateau and you can see just how beautiful this place is why there be so many areas protected. With this area being so dry it's not really places people would be living and this is land that really wasn't wanted for many many years. And throughout U.S. history, unwanted land became part of the Bureau of Land Management, which is what most of this land in the Colorado Plateau once was. And I know a lot of folks don't like the fact that the government controls all this land, but I don't see this land as being government control. I see it as being people's land. And besides, this is probably the least hospitable part of the country in which to live. There really shouldn't be development here anyway. But overall, this is one of my favorite parts of the country and my single favorite part of the country for exploring the wilderness. So if you like hiking and backpacking and mountain biking, this is one of the best parts of the country, if not the best part of the country for it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more stuff about geography from a nerdy perspective. I cover cities, physical geography, all kinds of stuff. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Brian J. Welcome to the club. If you're interested in purchasing a pin for the viewer wall map or just to support the channel, please check out my Patreon page with the link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.